here we are again. It's still punkin. We, ooh, look at how shiny that is. You're like, ooh, ah. Episode 8. Yeah, we did the French polish. I hope you learned something off that. If you're just seeing this now, go back up, click the uh, playlist up there. There's one at the end of the video as well. Don't get all confused. Pay attention to me because I'm doing this for you. Anyway, we are off to putting a bolt through the neck on this thing, and you're going to say, why are you doing that? Well, I'm going to show you why, and the most important thing about this is I'm going to explain is that when you take the back off of an arch top, this gets really flimsy. So I showed you this trick of how to put a yardstick here, and before we can take that yardstick off, this neck and this body have to be lined up where they know everything is going to be okay before. Where is it? Before I put the back on. The back is floating around here somewhere. I'm just making sure that I don't step on it. Anyway, let's get to the bench where the goal for this episode is to get that bolt in here. Get the neck lined up, show you how to make sure that the floating bridge is in the right spot and that everything is lined up here. So we bolt that neck. Once we get all that done, then we are going to glue the back on and it's going to be so very purdy. Yeah. Let's get to the bench now. Okay, guys, we are on the bench. I've got the guitar here, and we're going to be really, really serious right now because this is, you see how much time I have into this guitar, and you know how warped it is and everything that I've done to it, but this is the part where it either turns out or it does not. Now, you know that I have had Tammy sign the guitar right there, so that that is... A pretty good indicator now let me get this settled in here I have told you over and over listen to me again and again here but we know that this guitar was warped it was twisted it was bent everything and what makes us think that with all these bends and contortions and things twisting and cracking that as soon as we fix those, everything is just going to jump right into place where this neck glues on and everything is going to be good. The fragile part of this whole deal is right here. Had I not put this yardstick on here and kept everything measured to what the dimensions of what Pumpkin's back part is when it's flipped over, as soon as I put this on, if this is not correct, and this is too far one way or too far another, you hear them dogs out there freaking out and barking because they know how serious this is. This is so flimsy right here. It pitches this way and this way. And like I've said, it will give you, let's pretend this is the neck angle. It will do this or this and things will be ruined. So before we take this off, we want to make sure that the neck is glued on, and that's what we have done. Now, do you really think that this neck is going to be perfect? There's gaps here, there's gaps there. But the important thing here is that when we lay a straight edge here, that the straight edge comes up, and where our bridge is going to be, that that spot needs to be right with where the bridge is going to sit, okay? So, I glued this on already, and I'm going to show you there's a hole right there. Do you see it? And there is a T-nut inside that's exiting right there. You see it? I'm going to show you what we did and why. Now, let me make sure I got everything lined up here. This camera angle is not correct. I would really like to get the angle or the camera up a lot higher, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. But let's let's take a look at um, You're going to see in the future 
a, a series of episodes where I am going to actually work on a flat top, a Gibson B25, that, believe it or not, came out with a plastic bridge about 1962 or 1963. Now, the difference between an arch top and a flat top is the arch top has a tailpiece back here in this bridge. I can put a completely different neck on this guitar, and as long as I measure from the nut, the back of the nut, down to the fretboard, and I know what that measurement is, down to, the, down to the 12th fret, and then I take that same measurement and go from the 12th fret to wherever the strings are going to hit the top of the bridge. It might be a tunematic bridge. It might be uh, a graduated bridge. It just might be a straight bridge that has adjustable uh, thumb wheels on it. That is very different than this. With this, this has to sit in a certain spot. It has to be copacetic with this string and this string. So the spacing of the width of the, the fingerboard or fretboard is important. It has to be in the center here and in the center here. And you see that this is graduated here. So it can't be tipped this way, it can't be tipped this way. It has to be in the perfect spot here, here, here. And the most important thing is where the center, you can see that that's tilted, it's graduated. That the center of this has to be at the same measurement. So, in this case, we took this gadget. I put a mark right here. I'm going to place this with... with uh, uh, steel so it doesn't warp it but this is mahogany I put something there to mark that this I put at the back of the knot at the top of the fingerboard and then I go to the 12th fret I set this on the 12th fret and I use this thumb screw that's a t-nut I think I've showed you how to make one of these or you'll see it in the Gibson video anyway that's Gibson B25 I set that trust me is at the back of, of the, the start of the fretboard, right behind the nut. Then I simply turn this around on the 12th fret. And look at this floating bridge. I can move it this way. I can move it this way, whatever I want to do. But if this were a flat top guitar, this would have to be right in the center of that saddle. Has to be. So... These arch tops are a little bit different animal. Now, what I need to know is, did I do the neck angle when I glued this thing up appropriately where I can put a straight edge, a heavy metal straight edge on the frets? And where does this line up? Uh, remember, if you're using... A bridge on a flat top you got little room to work here with this I can it's actually uh, down about five millimeters and of course this is going to come up a little bit the strings are going to be up a little bit I asked somebody how do you measure your string height at the 12th fret they said a quarter and a penny I love guys like that but Let's say that this is too high. Um, I, I certainly don't want it way up here where my bridge is ridiculously high. I don't want it too low. So I can knock some wood off the bottom of this, do whatever I need to do. So there's a number of options here, but you always want to consider that. The takeaway on this is when I get this neck glued on here is my bridge where it needs to be. I don't need it where I'm I, I'm looking at it being that much off the deck here and it's impossible somewhere in between. I want to be able to have enough room to raise this because lowering it becomes very difficult. So once I know that that neck is good, then I glue it. Now, this part is where I run into trouble with people. 
this guitar is going to continue to try and straighten itself out from look everything you've seen about it says it was all tweaked out and all that kind of thing so what I want to do is I want to put I want to find a way to fix this neck fixed meaning it's going to stay where it is and the way to do that is I put let me get some here to cover this up where we can get some some oh ain't that nice so I use one of these it's flattened there it's not tapered it's just flattened kind of uh, like a carriage bolt without the without the uh, without the square part but it's nice and flush there you see that it is a Phillips head I don't want anything else it is a steel bolt that's what I want this is a t-knot this screws into here so what will happen is this will go through the neck this is one size I need the hole to be just a little bit bigger than that but not bigger than this because I'm gonna put this washer on here this will slip into the neck it will go all the way through to the head block this will actually be in the head block it will be in this way and once I get everything set up this will screw in like this and then I will use some chick flick teal screws to put this and place it to the head block you saw that there so let's take a piece of wood here and figure out how to do this because you have to kind of work backwards through it so there are let's use these two pieces of wood because this one is long enough so this represents kind of like let's call this the neck part here and this is the tail block so if I'm gonna put this through here look at that that's almost perfect now what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to take something that's long enough to drill through that whole this whole assembly neck the attachment joint and the head block I don't want some big monstrous thing because again I don't want to end up exceeding this so I use something like this that's long enough and the right size that will go all the way through now why do I want my neck glued on and tightened up well because there's going to be angle to things right things are going to flex like this I want to know what that angle is I want it to be set we're not trying to set the neck angle with this we're trying to keep it in place once it's done so everything is here it's glued up so I take a small bit, I find the center of the uh, heel block. You gotta be careful with that. You also wanna remember that heels get narrower as they go down into the, 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 the joint of the guitar that they sit in. So if you're drilling way down here, you wanna drill up in here where it's wider, okay? So you're gonna do a pilot hole all the way through. Now, I want you to see that this is bigger than the threads you see that so once I drill that through I'm gonna use a small enough bit so I can use a Forstner bit that will see there's a point on that right if I drill some big monstrosity hole and I try to center this up to get that inset that you saw this is just gonna to start to waller and it's gonna be all over the map so First thing you want to do is on the outside, once you get it drilled through, before you use the bigger bit that will be the size of the threads, you actually want to take this, while that hole is still small, like so, and drill down about this far to make a nice little pocket that will have a heel on it. Now, then you go to the inside of the guitar, and you think, wait a minute, I really have to, if I'm going to have it look professional, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this T-knot is actually embedded down into the heel block. It's not sticking up like that. 
And again, you have to think about it. I'm going to have to countersink that somehow. Well, if we got a small hole coming through, we take this and then we drill this and this is going to give us a way to inset this down into the back of the head block like so. But then you've got this to deal with. So again, if you've taken some big monstrous bit that will, let me see just one for an example here. I, I've got all these on a magnet. Let's say that I just decide, oh, I need to get this in there first and then, and then think about how I'm going to set that in. If I hit this first and then try to take this Forstner bit that it again has a point on it, this is going to waller all over the place. So again, pilot hole all the way through after your neck is on, after you know your angle is on. That was in, in the episode about resetting the neck. Pilot hole. This. Pilot hole is here. This. Then you go ahead and drill the hole that's big enough for the thread. And then on the back end, you drill the hole that's big enough to ins inset the, I can't believe I actually am looking at it. I found it already. That's going to inset this down deep enough. No more. You don't want to be drilling, uh, drilling out any bigger holes than you need to. But let me flip this around and show you what it looks like. All right, let's flip it over. There is the pocket that has the Phillips headed top of the bolt. Notice that there's a gap there. I don't care. This thing is trashed, but this thing is copacetic with the world. And it lines up with how the neck has to be set. And there is where everything exits. Let me get the pointer here. Everything exits right there. Do you see it? The T-knot is down inside. The, the uh, bolt pr protrudes through, but there's chick flick teal screws holding that. So the way this works is once you get this in here and you get, in, get it tightened up, remember, it's not an adjustment. Your neck angle is set through the gluing process. We have put so much effort into making sure that everything is braced, including this freeway overpass. Again, everything about these guitars, everybody say, oh, they need a neck reset. Well, they probably do, but most of these things, especially with the tone bars, when I'm talking about tone bar guitars, when this starts to collapse, the arch collapses, and then your action goes down, and no amount of neck reset will do that. So that is how this stays in place. Okay, guys, fast forward. I've done something really crazy here. Help me out. Chick flick teal pointer. And I need you to bring in your friend that told me the secret. Meet a little chick flick teal bird told me about this trick here. I have the trapeze on here. You see that? It's got one screw in it. So it's fixing to cut loose and shoot off over there. And remember kids, electricity will kill you. But pay attention here. I have a tunematic bridge here that's rollers that you can use all these little Allen wrenches and God knows what to move the intonation points forward and back. This is about where this goes. But I have a 60 string. How many of y'all use 60 strings on your guitars? And then I have a 36 string over here. So we have strung this guitar up here, here. And we even put a bridge way up here. I don't know if you can see it. But let me pop this out of here for just a second. Now, this is crazy. The back is not on this guitar. But it's got that yardstick, remember? So, trapeze is on, bridge is on, nut is on. Hey, pumpkin! Anyway, so, point of the matter being here, I need you to look at the string height 
Is that what you would want out of a neck reset? Well, I got a lot I can take off of the bridge there. That neck angle's right, but that's a very high action, isn't it? We don't want that. What did we do the neck reset for? So we're going to clamp this puppy down, and I'm going to show you something completely and utterly disamazing. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. Remember that? That's got to be the worst song ever, especially when I sing it. But I'm going to tighten up these tuners a little bit. What is that? That's probably low A. That sounds familiar to you, huh, Drew Barrington? Shh. Shh. Anyway. I'm going to tighten this one up a little bit. Now, I have told you, everything's a neck reset. Oh, got to have a neck reset. But I've also told you that if things start messing up right up here. Let me get the camera adjusted correctly. Click, click. I don't want to bust that ball. But if, that can't, if this right here on the underside is not right when you glue the back back on, you can get a lot of movement right here. Watch this. Can you see it? Well, I bet you can hear it. Listen. You hear that? Now, I'm looking at the string action right here. This is way too high. Oh, that's just right. All that flex is coming when you put the neck, uh, you put the back on again. So the neck isn't moving, it's bolted to the tail, of the, the head block up here. So there's a lesson for you. When I glue the back on, I am going to string this up, I'm going to flex it, and I'm going to clamp everything. Then I will glue the back on gluing the back on in one shot and pretending that everything is going to fit just right won't work. There's going to be something sticking out this way or that way that I'm going to have to trim off. And there is a secret from Chick Flick T.O. Bird. Let's close this out. Okay, guys, I have said it once, I say it a hundred times more. When you see a guitar with tone bars, meaning you stick your, watch this, I've got a little finger, I stick it in there, I feel one of those there. I look, the action is way up. The bridge is trimmed down to nothing. This right here is flexing. You can watch it happen. So, I close this one out here because the moral of the story is when I put the back on this thing, we're going we're gonna to take the strings off and we're going to or loosen them up and then we're going to glue the back on here. We don't want to have the strings tightened up when this is here. But the only thing holding this guitar together right now is the yardstick. If I were to take this off and tighten up, this is a 60 string and a 36 string. So they're just there to kind of get us set up. Now, that bolt is not doing anything for us. It's just going to keep this relationship standard. Now, you can see that this will flex right here if you watch this part. So I could pop a little shim under there. I could do a number of things. But the moral of the story is you have to be ever so cognizant of what is going on right here. These sides are so thin. So when you get a guitar, we're going to get into a 1918 Gibson that has a split right here. And, that, that, and then the sides are cracked. I think the head block is cracked. So we're going to get into that. But we're going to practice on pumpkin. I am really happy that Punkin has a sponsor now. This guitar is going to go out to somebody 
that's incredible. And once this has been up for a while, and we all know who that is, there will be a link up there to this person playing punk. And so, the next time you see us, we're going to be changing this back to a right-handed guitar. We, me, and my multiple personalities. Uh, we're going to be changing this back to a right-handed guitar because we were going to string it up lefty, but it has been, again, sponsored by somebody. So, let's close this out with an observation. I should put on my glasses for this one so I can look far more intellectual. So, remember kids, electricity will kill you. Um, I would have to say this. The quality, um, value, uh, sophistication, and cultural significance of the instruments that are coming to the shed now is starting to amaze me beyond what I can imagine. And that, my friends, is scary. So, for example, I have something to show you. Um, and I guess I should warn you, there's good news and bad news. The good news is, is that, look at this. This cello showed up in my shop. It's over a hundred years old, which means it's as old as most of my subscribers. Now, if you look at it, it's not perfect. It's actually ready to be junk piled. I'm so happy with this. But there's bad news. The bad news is that the warden called in the prison orchestra wants it back. Give me a like and subscribe if you haven't. The playlist is up there. See you soon.